Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our second video on getting started with REDCap. So I went ahead and opened an internet browser and I navigated to openredcap.nyumc.org. And to log in, I'm going to go ahead and use my Kerberos ID and associated password to log in. I'm going to go ahead and click the login button. We do have that two step verification process. So I'm going to go ahead and verify my identity by navigating through a few more steps. And once I log in, we can see that we have the My Projects page. And this is going to be the area where all of your projects live. Um, so these are the ones that you create, as well as the ones that you have been added to as a collaborator. A few things that I want to note about this page is that um, REDCap has a very helpful help and FAQ section. So they're divided into these topic areas. And there's a lot of questions that have been answered um, in this area. Um, you can also search for a particular question by entering a keyword or phrase. So if I wanted to know a little bit more about something called branching logic, I can go ahead and search. And we can see that there's actually 38 questions that have been found on this topic. Um, so this is a great resource if you want to learn a little bit more about a particular question or topic um, in REDCap. We also have some additional REDCap training videos. So these are relatively short videos that will help you get and learn more about REDCap functionality. So those are two resources that I wanted to mention before we really jump into things. So next I want to create a new project. Um, so to create a new project, we just click the green plus new project tab. And then I'm going to go ahead and give my project a title. So today, this is just a demonstration. So I'm going to do demo dash NYU HSL. And today, this will be practice just for fun. But if it was research, you were going to add a little bit more information, such as the PI's name and an IRB number, if applicable. But as I mentioned, we're just practicing. So I'm going to click practice just for fun. And I want to make sure empty project blank slate is selected. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project. And this is the main interface for our projects. As we can see, there's a lot of links on this left hand side. And as we you know, go through these videos, you will learn more and more um, about what these links mean and a little bit more about the functionality. So I won't spend too much time on that today. But a, th a few things that I want to mention um, is this project setup page. Um, and this can really be thought of as a workflow. Um, so currently right now we are in development mode, which means that we're developing our projects. We're refining our questions, you know, perhaps we're adding some test data. Um, and then once we are ready to collect data, we will then move it from development mode to production mode, which basically will lock down the questions of the project and will allow us to do um, some more data collection. So we do have a completed steps zero of seven. I um, mean, you can really think of this area as some steps that you would need to do before you uh, move your, your project to development mode or from development mode to production. So a few things that I wanna mention is this first one is the main project settings. Um, so by default, um, surveys and longitudinal data um, are turned off, but we will be working with these in subsequent videos. We also have the second area we can kind of think of as step two. Um, we have the online designer, which is going to be our point and click interface. And that's how we're going to build our survey today. Um, you can also build your survey in a data dictionary, which basically allows you to use a spreadsheet format to build out your survey. And we also have the REDCap instrument library. And this is going to be a library of data collection instruments, um, some that have been vetted by um, the REDLOCK um, Oversight Committee. Um, and it's basically a collection of existing forums. And it may be a good resource if you needed, a, say, a demographics forum um, or something like that. Um, and we'll be using this in subsequent videos. 
Um, a few things that I want to mention is that we can see that auto numbering for records is green. So that means that it is turned on. Um, and that is a good thing. It means that REDCap is going to give a unique, unique identifier um, or record ID to our records. And these are normally done in sequential order, starting with number one. Um, we also have the user rights and permissions, and we'll be going over that a little later in our video. Um, something that I want to mention, once you have created your, your form um, and you really like the questions, it may be helpful to send it out to collaborators just so you have a few extra eyes on it and get some test data. And that really will help us refine our project. And once it has been refined and you are ready to move it from development mode to production mode, you can go ahead and move it to production mode using this button right here. So that's just a quick overview of this page. Um, the next thing that I want to do is actually start building my form. And I do that by going to the online designer. So I'm going to go ahead and click into here. And we can see by default, REDCap gives you this empty form. It's called Form 1. Um, I like to use it as the basis of my forms. I can rename it if I choose. Um, you know, for today, I'm not going to rename it, but you certainly can. So I'm going to go ahead and click into Form 1. And we are ready to add fields. Um, we do have one existing field, um, and that is going to be our record ID. As I mentioned earlier, we do have the automated numbering for our records turned on, um, which means that REDCap is going to assign um, a record ID um, to the records that we add. We do have some options for adding questions. The first one is going to be add a field, and that's actually going to be where we spend the majority of today's video. Otherwise, we do have a matrix of fields. And basically, this is kind of a, a matrix um, where we have um, questions, um, but all of the answers are going to be the same. So if you're familiar with something like a Likert scale, it is very similar in nature. Um, so if you wanted to add a matrix to your questionnaire, you can go ahead um, by go ahead in doing that by adding um, a matrix here. We also have import from field bank. Um, and this is the functionality of the um, common data elements. So there's a repository of some common data elements, um, which is, you know, maybe very helpful if you need to, you know, use a specific um, existing question and use that question in your form. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on those two items, but we are going to spend some time on adding a field. Um, so there's a variety of questions or question types, I should say, that you can add to your REDCap project. Um, so the first one is going to be our text box. This is going to be a short text, such as a number um, or date or time, um, where people uh, can enter um, some information. Um, the next one we have is a paragraph text. So this is going to be a bit longer than a text box. So it gives us some space um, to kind of give a more robust answer. We also have a calculated field. So sometimes we may want to do some sort of calculation. A lot of times it'll be based on another variable that we collect. Um, for instance, if I'm collecting weight as well as height, I think I can do a calculation such as BMI in, using a calculated field. We also have two different options for multiple choice. The first one is going to be a drop down list, and we can, you know, this is a drop down list that we're looking at. But we can also have radio buttons, which are going to be little buttons next to our options, and then our participants can add a single answer. Um, we also have check boxes. So this is, means that, you know, check all that apply, um, as well as yes, no, and true, false. Um, these are basically the options that um, a respondent can choose um, for this particular question. We also have a signature field. Um, it basically means that our participant can um, add a signature using a mouse or a, their finger. And we also have file upload. Um, so this allows your participants to add a file if they need to. So this could be, um, you know, a document. It could be, you know, photos. It can be, you know, any type of a file that they would need to upload on their end of things. 
We also have a sly and a visual analog scale. Um, and, you know, just as a quick example, we could do something like a pain scale of one to 10 and our users can, you know, select, select the degree of their pain using the visual analog scale. We also have descriptive text. So these are optional image videos or audio files that you can add that can add that can add um, contextual information to your question. And lastly, we do have section headers. So if you know if there's some logical breaks that you want to add to your form, you can use the section headers to sort of visually and logically break up your your form. Um, for today, I'm going to go ahead and start with adding a text box. And we can see we have a few options. So we have our field label, and we can really think of this as the question that we want to ask. Um, in this instance, I'm going to do something like, what is your first name? Um, and then we have our variable name. Um, so these can only be on uh, lowercase letters, numbers, and underscores. And our variable is going to be the um, variable that's associated with our question and the data that we collect. Um, so you can kind of think of these as the headers or the, the names of our columns in a spreadsheet, if you will. In this case, I'm going to give it something descriptive, um, such as first underscore name. We can um, add validation. So for this question, we're probably going to ex in, uh, expect um, a, you know, a text value. So I could certainly do um, letters only, um, but there's other types of validation. So we have date validation, and we have emails, integers, numbers, and then numbers to a certain de decimal point, as well as um, some postal codes and phone numbers. Um, so I'm not going to add validation, but I did want to draw your attention um, to the fact that it is um, it is a functionality within REDCap. Um, we can also mark things as required or as or not required, um, as well as identifiers. Um, so in this case, if this a, this is a name, so I'm going to go ahead and mark it as an identifier. And then um, this looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and add or uh, click save. All right, so now we have added our first question to our REDCap form. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more. So I'm gonna say, what is your last name? And my variable could be last underscore name. I'm not gonna add validation. Um, I'm not gonna make it required, but I certainly could. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna mark it as an identifier. Click yes, and hit save. Um, because this is a demo, I'm just going to add a question about favorite color. Um, and instead of a text box, I'm going to go ahead and do, let's do multiple choice radio button single answer. So my question is going to be, what is your favorite color? My variable name can be something like fave underscore color. I'm not going to make it required, and it's not an identifier. Um, but a little bit different than our free text, uh, I do have um, to add the choices. So this is going to be the options that my participant can choose from. Um, and then for REDCap, we're going to add those choices one per line. So I'm going to add blue, green, to purple, and red. Um, and you know, perhaps this isn't somebody's favorite color, so I want to give them some space um, to go ahead and add a free text field. So in that case, I'm going to add the option of other. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Um, and once I click out of, or click away from this uh, choice box, um, we can see that REDCap automatically added um, some raw values. So um, the raw value for Blue is going to be one, green two, and so on and so forth. Um, this is really helpful because this is going to be uh, what's considered our label. So this is going to be the text values. Um, and then we also have that numeric raw value. And a lot of times our analysis is going to be done um, on these numeric raw values. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And remember, we do want to have um, an option or a place where um, if folks choose other, um, they can have a free text area to add their favorite color if it's not in that list. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add another field. 
And I'm just going to do a text box this time. And I'll say something like, if other, please specify. Okay. And for my variable name, I could do something like bathe color other. And I'm not going to make it required and it's not an identifier. Um, so this looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Um, and, you know, maybe I just want this question to appear when a participant selects other. And I can do that um, by using, using something called branching logic. Um, and basically what that means is that this question, so this last question, will only appear when someone selects other, which is really helpful because the people that are selecting these colors don't necessarily need to see this, this question. It's only relevant for folks that are choosing other. Um, and as I mentioned, you can do this through branching logic. And to add branching logic, I'm going to go ahead and click this double arrow. And I like to use the drag and drop logic builder. And basically, I'm going to choose um, the options um, that are associated with the branching logic. In this case, it's going to be if people choose other. So it's fave colors. That's going to be our variable name. And our answer option is going to be other. And all I need to do is drag it to this other box and drop it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now I have added branching logic. So when folks choose other, this question will appear. And I can test that um, by going up to um, add edit records. I'm going to go ahead and add a new record. And we see our form that we've just created. Um, and I have a free text field for first name. So I'm going to go ahead and add my name as well as my last name. And um, I could certainly choose blue, uh, but perhaps blue isn't my favorite color. Um, it's actually yellow. Um, I can click this other, and we see this question has now appeared. So it looks like our branching logic, branching logic is working as it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and, and enter yellow. Um, I do have different, I can mark it as um, incomplete, unverified, or complete. This is now a completed form. So I'm going to go ahead and click complete and save and exit form. Um, so now we've built our form um, and I've added branching logic and I tested that branching logic. Um, something that I want to point out um, is this record status dashboard. Um, and basically, um, as I collect data, I will have more and more records, and then you can access all of those records using the record status dashboard. All right, and so that is it for this video. Um, please join us for our last video for getting started. We will be going over um, adding collaborators and user rights.